Now, we should also talk a little bit about how has Citizens United otherwise actually affected the racists involved. I think one of the biggest things that it has done is it has made racists more fluid. That is, it is possible to get money into a political race much more quickly than used to be the case. And one can view that as good or bad. Uh, most incumbent politicians tend to view that as bad. Why? Because incumbents usually start with a big lead in name recognition and fundraising, and they're usually pretty comfortable. And who's going to get that big influx of cash? It's almost always going to be a challenger who suddenly shows some life or some spunk, and incumbents don't like that. A classic example would be the 2010 race between uh, Bob Etheridge, a blue dog Democrat down in North Carolina, and a woman named Renee Elmers, uh, who's now a congresswoman. And Etheridge had won re-election very easily in 2008 and in most of his pre-election or, or prior campaigns. Uh, in 2008, he had only token opposition. In 2010, it was known it was going to be a bad year for Democrats. Elmer was a better candidate. She was raising some money. He was going to have to maybe you know, jog a little bit to win re-election. But he was on nobody's watch list, not even on the you know, likely Democrat, but watch. He was a safe seat in every one of the major rankings that undertakes those rankings. Until one day, he's walking outside the Capitol building, and some of these gonzo journalists jumped him and started asking him hard questions he didn't like, and he eventually lost his temper, and was, these were like, you know, these young student journalists, and they, he was trying to grab the camera and throw a punch at him or something like that, and it looked really bad, <laughs> and he was probably going gradually out of step with his district anyway, in the sense that his voting record was becoming more liberal, the district was probably becoming more conservative, and this provided the opening for Elmer's, but what made the difference was that it was possible to get almost $500,000 into that campaign in independent expenditures allowed by uh, Citizens United and Speech Now almost overnight. Whereas in the past, Etheridge, with a huge fundraising advantage, would have just ridden that out. As it is, Etheridge spent far more uh, than Elmer's. He spent uh, about two and a half times what Elmer's spent. And even when you include the independent spending that favored Elmer's, he outspent her by about $600,000. And like a lot of incumbents, Etheridge complained that this was terribly unfair that these independent groups could come in and spend all this money. Uh, a classic example in that case is Dan Maffei, a former congressman and once again a current congressman. But he was defeated in 2010, won back his seat in 2012. In 2010, Maffei was uh, uh, the target of about $500,000 in independent spending that was made uh, possible because of Speech Now and Citizens United. And he said over and over that this cost him the election. It was terribly unfair. He lost the election because of this independent spending. And he's almost certainly right because he lost the election by just a few hundred votes. So it probably did swing enough to win those votes. What Maffei does not seem to think or did not seem to think was unfair and has never complained about is that he outspent his opponent in that race by three $3.1 million to $840,000. And even with then the independent spending, he outspent her by more than two to one by well over a million dollars. That to him was perfectly fine, perfectly fair. That was the normal consequence of the Federal Election Campaign Act, under which incumbent spending advantages rose from about one and a half to one to four to one. And this is just fine and normal in the way it ought to be. But let a group of citizens come in who aren't controlled by a candidate and spend money. And this is outrageous. This must be stopped. The Supreme Court must be impeached, right? That was Dan Maffei's position. So we see over and over in races, they've been made more fluid. Uh, and we've seen candidates such as uh, Pete DeFazio, a congressman from Oregon, who had never had a serious challenge since his first election, actually have to break a sweat. DeFazio won re-election and in the end won it fairly easily in, 19, in 2010, like 55, 56%. But he had to at least run for the first time in years, primarily because independent spending made it possible for a challenger to launch a real campaign. A couple of the other things that have occurred, I think, uh, is that, um, and, and you know, we could go on and on with examples there, but, but uh, I'll leave that as it is. One other thing we see is that I think uh, Citizens United and, and its concurrent cases have made political parties weaker. Remember that the McCain-Feingold law banned soft money to political parties, right? Now, soft money was in many ways the best kind of money in the political system. If you want disclosure, it was totally disclosed, right, 
100% disclosed. It went to the parties and not directly to candidates, so there was an intermediary between the donor and the candidate on whose race it might be spent. Um, it was easy to raise, could be raised quickly, so you didn't have to spend lots of time raising money, another big complaint that we often hear about the system. Um, so it seemed to be, in some ways, the best money in the system. But McCain-Feingold banned it because, you know, it looked bad. It looked bad. It was large amounts of money. They could say, well, large amounts of money, and, and kind of go into the hysterics, and, and it looked bad. Okay, so they banned soft money to the political parties. The cases that have come since, the Citizens United cases, and Speech Now and so on, now allow independent spenders and allow uh, people to pool their resources to make independent expenditures without limit or without uh, prohibitions on the source. So the end result is that uh, groups such as Crossroads GPS or more traditional groups such as the Chamber or Planned Parenthood can spend large amounts of money and can raise and spend money in many ways much more easily than the parties can. And this reduces, I think, the importance of parties, which are broad coalitions, increases the importance of single interest groups and of uh, individual candidates. And I'm not sure that that is a good thing uh, for uh, the political system. But I would note that that can be resolved primarily by simply making it easier for parties and candidates to raise money directly, uh, rather than try to put Citizens United back in the box, which uh, I don't think is possible since it's a constitutional decision. Thus, I would suggest that what we ought to be looking in future efforts for reform is to deregulate the system in ways that will equalize political actors, restore parties to a position of greater significance, right? Make it so that candidates uh, have some of the same advantages, or better put, lack of disadvantages that independent uh, spending groups do. I also think, by the way, we should quit calling uh, independent expenditure groups outside spending, as if somehow they're outside the pale. Um, it's always seemed odd to me, this, this concept that uh, elections, uh, campaigns should be just for the candidates. And you hear the candidates say, I can't control my own message. And it's kind of like, well, who says you should control your own message? I mean, I guess you, you can control your own message, but who says you control the message of the campaign? We as citizens want to hear about something else. This is what we want to talk about. But I do think, on the other hand, that it's silly to have candidates laboring under burdens that the independent uh, spenders are not. So I hope that will, that will go away. I think we'll find, if we really look at the case, if we get past all the hysterics, that none of the dire predictions of Citizens United have come true. Turnout remains strong. You know, we have, we have a good, very healthy democracy, very healthy elections. Uh, the problems people complain about, about gridlock, I think there's almost no evidence that those can be thrown at Citizens United. Again, those are the same complaints we heard uh, before when Republicans were talking about reforming the filibuster rules and so on. Uh, so I think in the end that these have been good for democracy. And I think finally they have been most good for democracy because what the court does is says firmly and clearly that there are limits on the ability of government to regulate the political speech of its, of its citizens. And I think that is one of the most important statements we can have. I just do not think that in the end, heavy government regulation of campaign finance will exist without ultimately government regulation of the content of the messages. We've seen that over the years already in examples that I can get to in Q&A if people want to do that. And it's a very important statement to recognize that we as free people have the right to speak out in elections. Thank you. Thank you.